demonstration is about the pencils that you're going to have, about blending, shading, uh, and value study. Value study is anything to do with shading in art. What you guys need to understand is the first drawing that I gave you, the first graph drawing was a line drawing. Line is one of the first elements of art. Right now you're going to study value. It's another element of art. Once you add value to lines, it becomes more three-dimensional, becomes more realistic. A black and white drawing that has shading in it, that has value study in it, is going to look more realistic than just a sketch, which is a line drawing. This project that you're going to have here is a practice in shading. You've got a shadow circle and a shadow circle here. And this is something that I have every single one of my drawing classes, whether it's an art one or a drawing class, do. Uh, I've actually had so many students do this at times where I've had students say, it just gets annoying to have to do this. And I totally understand this. I had a student go on to the American Academy of Art. I had a student go on to the Art Institute. Both of them came back and said when they got into their drawing classes, in those prestigious art colleges, they had to do shadow circles. And they were amazed that they had to do this because it's a study in creating value. Um, what, I, what I'm going to have you do is basically, I want you to shade this circle to look like this circle. And this is going to take a little bit of practice and time. First of all, what you need to understand is a little bit about this pencil. This is uh, a 6B pencil. It is a different pencil than the pencil that you guys use every day. The pencils that you guys have that you use for tests and anything like that is a number two pencil or an art standards, it's what's called an HB pencil. An HB pencil is an average darkness pencil, okay? Pencils go from 6H, which are the lightest pencils that you would work with. They, I think they get even lower than that, but 6H is the lightest I use. And they go up from there, 6H, 5H, 4H, 3H, 2H, and then it goes to HB. HB is the middle of the ground level pencil. It is the exact same as a number two pencil. To buy a six or an uh, HB pencil costs more though than buying a pack of number two pencils, which is why I don't buy them. It's just easier to have you guys bring in a number two pencil and sketch with it because that's what I would have you sketch with as an HB pencil. To make darker pencils, the pencils go up from there. So they go 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, and they go higher than that. But the problem with it is, is the lead in these pencils gets softer the higher the number, the higher the B number. So if it's 7B or 8B, you have an incredibly soft lead. The softer the lead, the darker the pencil is. Because you press it into the paper, it makes an incredibly dark layer on the paper. The problem with that with students is, I often see students, if I get a darker 6B, 7B, 8B, they break their lead over and over and over, just go through pencils one after another. So 6B is the darkest pencil I give you. What I want you to understand with the 6B pencil is, I've had many students as they're Messing with these pencils, drop the pencils. The lead is so soft, the lead will break inside the pencil. So the pencil might look fine, but the lead will break inside the pencil. I call it spiral breaking, where it breaks almost in a spiral. If you drop your pencil and spiral break your lead, you'll know because every time you go to sharpen your pencil, the lead's just going to fall out. You go to sharpen it, it falls out. You've probably done that to regular pencils in the past and not realize you broke the lead inside the pencil. If you've ever had a pencil, you've taken on the pencil sharpening, you just keep sharpening, lead falls out, sharpen, lead falls out, sharpen, lead falls out. You've probably dropped that pencil at some point in time. You probably spiral broke the lead through the entire thing. It happens. Okay. These pencils are so delicate that that's a problem with them. What I also want you to understand, um, this part of art is the one part that takes more practice than anything. Shading and value study. When I tell you guys about graph drawing and doing all that kind of stuff, that's your seeing and that is your following what your eyes show you. Your eyes show you that you need to put a line in a certain spot, that's where you put it. It's very simple. With shading, it takes a little bit of practice and hand pressure. I'm gonna actually flip this sheet over and show you another thing. <clears throat> I'm right-handed. Now, up on that projection 
it projects backwards if you guys didn't notice. So you'll see it looks like my my hand is that I'm left handed. Um, but when you watch this on YouTube later, or if you have any questions and you go back in Google Classroom and you watch this presentation, it'll actually present the right way. It'll present it like I'm right handed. What you'll see though is this. As I sketch, I want you to notice something. Most people complain to me, Mr. Sungroth, I cannot draw a straight line. Well, that's relatively normal for everybody. If I were to close my eyes and try to draw a straight line, and I say close my eyes, you probably wonder why would I close my eyes? Because my hand is on a natural pivot. My wrist pivots, okay? If you shade the right way, you shade with your wrist. So if I'm gonna shade, that's the natural pivot I have. You'll notice it creates a curve to the pivot. What I always tell my students is, number one, artists know how to use their body. They know how to use their hand. I know how to use my hand the right way. When I'm shading, I will never shade a curve that goes this way with the paper that way. The reason I have you guys draw things upside down, right side over, because when I'm drawing, I will rotate the paper to match the curve of my hand. If I'm drawing a curve that goes like this, I'll turn my hand so I've got the curve naturally. I don't try to draw against it. I'm gonna show you this. So if I'm drawing a natural curve and I'm shading it in, you can see that natural curve being drawn, okay? It's smooth, it's easy. If I'm going to, without moving my arm, try to create the exact same curve backwards, without moving my arm, That's what the shading looks like. I've watched students do this. I have no more ability in my hand than you do. I just know how to use my hand better. So when I'm shading a curve, I never shade against my natural curve, ever. I never ever will shade a curve against my hand because I'd be going, and I mean, okay, you probably think I'm purposely making it shaky. No matter how hard I try to not make it shaky going against my natural curve, your body, your hand tries to give you the natural curve. I turn it back this way and wow, simple. I'm telling you this for this reason. This is shaded in a curve. I tell you this because it would be dumb of me to work any of my shading on this side of the circle. So if I were to shade the circle this way, that's against that curvature of my hand. So when I shade this circle, I always shade this side of the circle to the middle, and I will continue to turn this paper and shade from the inside of the circle in until I've done this entire sheet, okay? I'm gonna get back to shading this in a second. I wanna show you now this eraser, if I can, uh, I'm not gonna sit here and open it, but this eraser, it's wrapped in plastic. It's called a kneadable or kneaded rubber eraser. I've got one that I use here all the time. And I wanna show you this eraser stretches. It twists, it turns, okay? I've got a few of them put together. You see the eraser? I'm gonna take a little chunk of it. This eraser is an artist eraser. We use this for everything in, in our classes. The reason that we use this, number one, this eraser is soft and pliable. So if I do happen to erase this way, I am less likely to tear the paper. Because as an artist, I do not want a torn piece of paper. Next thing that this eraser does, that's great. Oftentimes we'll be shading something and I'll shade it too dark. It, we all make mistakes. I make mistakes. The great thing is that I can fix my mistakes because I know how. What makes a person better at something is they know how to fix mistakes they make. Everybody makes mistakes, okay? This eraser, sometimes I need to lighten an area. I will stretch the eraser out, flip the eraser around, and I will dab the eraser, and I lighten an area. Press it down, lighten an area. Just by pressing it down an area, I've lightened the lead in that area, which is exactly what I want, okay? Another thing this eraser does, if I need to erase a super fine line in there, I set up the eraser and I get 
finest tip I possibly can. And I erase a little line, okay? I can shape this eraser to erase sections that I need the right way. That's why artists use this eraser. I also clean this eraser. I clean the eraser by stretching it. So you see any of my students in the past and any of you guys that have walked around in the hallways and noticed art students that had these erasers and they're doing this all the time. It's kind of addicting too. You sit here and you stretch the eraser out, stretch the eraser out. Well, that actually cleans the eraser. So if you pick up one of your erasers and your eraser seems dirty, stretch it out. You'll clean the eraser off, okay? Once you've got the eraser clean off, you can see the color of it change, everything like that. It's fine to use again. Um, I've picked up erasers that are completely covered in lead. They look really dirty and you stretch them out, they clean up, and they're usable again. So that's very important. This also is something that you can use if you're a shades area and you shade something like this too dark, you can dab it in lighter. What I want to show you now, though, is how to shade something like this. I'm not going to shade the entire thing for you. That'll take way too long. But your goal is to try to match the shading in this circle exactly to what you see here. Your goal is also then to match the exact shading pattern of this here, of this one here, and of this one here. If I were to do any of these, I'm going to turn it because I like to always shade from dark to light. And my also goal for you is to not shade outside of the lines, which is going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, one of the things that I talk about when I talk about shading is your stroke path. Okay, that's how long of a line I create. On the back side of the sheet, I'm creating a long stroke path. When I truly shade something big, I shade only with a stroke path about that long. If I'm shading a huge drawing, that takes me a while. But I'm going to tell you, it looks much more professional to shade with a short stroke path than a long stroke path. A long stroke path looks sloppy. A short stroke path looks much more crisp and clean. So as I go to shade this, I'm going to show you here. I'm going to work to try to shade this square the same as that square. And I'm going to start with the darker area here. I'm going to try and not go outside the lines. Now, I'm pressing much harder with the pencil on this side. Okay, I'm kind of going across a short shading path. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start working it towards me. And if I go out of line, I'm going to fix it like I went out of line just a little bit there. I'm going to fix it with the eraser afterwards. Okay, I'm going to work back and forth here. As I bring the pencil toward me, what you'll notice is as I push out, I press harder. As I pull towards me, I lighten the pressure. It's actually easier to me to do that, but I found with students, they all have their own techniques and, and uh, ways that they press. Some can create the most beautiful shading and they do it backwards of me. They press harder when the closer the pencil closer to them and lighter when it's away. For me, it works easier as I stretch out. I press harder with my thumb. As I come in, I don't press as hard. So my thumb is where I put the pressure. So I'm pressing harder here. And as I come this way, I get lighter. And what I want you to see as I'm doing this is I have to overlap and keep going back and forth over areas. I don't just do it once. It doesn't look smooth if I do it once. I have to do it multiple times back and forth over to create a nice gradient. Now, a gradient is that light to dark range. So you're creating gradients. Value study is creating gradients. Learning how to work shadows. If you can learn this part through practice, how to create a gradient the right way, it will make all your art 10 times better. If you practice this with the next couple projects that you're going to do for me, you're gonna notice that when you put this together with the line sketching, everything that you do is going to look better. I'm gonna show you something here. I'm gonna go really light with it there kind of back and forth, and then I'm going to show you the next part of this. In my room, I also have a couple things that work with my pencil. So there's my gradient right there. I did that complete with the pencil, but I also have these around my room. These are what, what are called blending sticks. Sometimes you pick up a blending stick, and I have these little sheets like this, and, and my, my students, when they first come in, aren't one, they're 
always asking, what is this for? Why do you have like little pieces of sandpaper on a piece of wood? Well, the sandpaper on the wood is because in order to sharpen these, you don't put them in a pencil sharpener. In order to clean them, you don't put them in a pencil sharpener. Instead, I rock the blending stick back and forth on a sanding strip, and I'm gonna clean it so that the tip is much more clean there. And what I do is starting on a light area of shading, I can take this, and some of you I'm sure learned to use your finger to do this when you were younger, but these make it much more smooth. And I'm going to work back and forth in blending and making this shading look much more smooth and much cleaner. Now, not all drawings have to have this. Some drawings actually look phenomenal with the actual texture of the pencil. And some drawings I will actually blend areas to make it look blurrier and then leave the texture of the pencil for other areas to make it look more crisp, okay? And that's completely fine to do something like that. So as you'll notice, as I'm working towards the darker, it actually darkens up my shading too. If I get in here and I work back and forth, all the way down towards the end, And I have done this blending there like that. So now I have the blending similar to that blending there. This, you'll notice how dark that is on the one side that I just did that. If I were to just take this and make a mark somewhere, it's going to smear. I never work from dark to light when I blend because you'll pull the dark into the light. Always work from light to dark when you blend. That way you don't accidentally pull or smear your dark shadows into your light shadows. All these are little simple things that norm, that we do as an artist that new students, when they're, when they're drawing, they're like, I struggle with doing this and this. It's just because you don't know to do these things. If you just remember to do these things, it'll make your stuff look better. Here's also another tool that we use for blending. This is an everyday chamois, but an actual chamois. If you guys know what a chamois is, they're used for cleaning cars, okay? I run to AutoZone. I buy a big chamois. I cut it up into a whole bunch of tiny little pieces because if you take this and you wrap it around your finger, it's much better than using your finger. It actually lightens your blending while you blend. So as I do this, you're going to notice the blending lighten. And as I work this way, if I have darkened an area too much, I can go back over it with this and lighten the blending. If I continue all the way, it's going to lighten the entire thing. Watch. So right into the entire shading. I don't want to do that over everything if I don't have to, because if I were really going to turn this into me now, I'd have to go back over and darken that and then back over and blend it with this again to make sure it was dark enough for me to match that. Okay. Another key for all you guys is um, whenever I have students do this, they're scared to go dark. That's the first thing I notice with all my students. And what I mean by scared to go dark, they're scared to press down and get dark colors to give to me and i don't ever understand why it's like oh no i'm gonna ruin my sheet by going a little too dark if you go a little too dark use this to lighten it up a little bit use this to lighten it up a little bit okay use this to blend it i've got a package of them up by my desk you guys can always use them but they always must go back because they're for my drawing class and for both my art ones it's that simple um you guys can use them at any time. You guys can sharpen them at any time. We've got these sheets all up there that you can use for those situations. So you're gonna do these squares like that. Now to do this, I'm going to create shadows in like a piece of pie, okay? I start out on the outside edge, dark. And as I work towards the middle, pull towards the middle. If I make it a little too light on the outside edge, I work it a little darker. And I keep going back and forth over areas until they look smooth. Otherwise, you will have what are called overlap lines. I'm going to see if I can get an overlap line for you. Okay. I'll come out. I'm going to go back in, see if I can get an overlap line, just so you can see the one line that I'm trying to talk about here. 
this is what I get from students a lot is an overlap line and they never fix their overlap lines. So if I keep going on this, you're going to see there is a good one. Okay, this line right here, can you guys see that? That is what's called an overlap line. That's where I've shaded, and then I shaded the next section, and they overlap, and that one section is just a darker line going in. When you do this, your goal is to avoid overlap lines. To avoid overlap lines, I don't just do it once. I overlap multiple times, back and forth, back and forth, to try to smooth those areas out. You're going to have overlap lines anytime that you just do something one time. Then, if I've done this entire thing, I clean my tip off with the sandpaper. I'm going to get a little bit cleaner so I can start here. And I start working from the inside out, just like you would anything else, to smooth this. And if you do this and you find out, wow, that's way too dark in the middle, guess what? Everybody makes mistakes. That's what the erase is for. Dab it a little bit, then take your blending stick and go over it again. It's, like I said um, before, it's like practicing anything. If you just hand it in to me um, kind of halfway done, that just shows me that you practiced kind of like the basketball player that practice is taking a thousand shots but they never make one they can tell their coach that they practice shooting a thousand shots but it doesn't do any good unless they make a thousand shots if that's too dark i can lighten it up a little bit in the middle and then or even take this one so that the blending is lighter in there and i work it out it's so much easier than people realize when they do this. So I want you guys to all realize as you're working all this stuff, your goal on this is to make it look as smooth and as perfect as possible. What you're going to do with this, you're going to, when you're done with this, in the next couple days, I'm going to give you another sketch to do. You're going to do the sketch through the graph. I'm not going to give you the shading for that sketch until you completely sketch it out. Then I'm gonna give you a separate sheet that shows you how to shade the sketch in that you have done. And I'm gonna have you shade it using this technique on your sketch. If you learn to take the technique of graph drawing and add it to the technique of shading the right way, your drawings become way better, okay? Instead of a regular sketch. You'll see as we do those projects, all right? So with that being said, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else here I did not show you. Um, I also want to do this. I'm going to show you real quick in this too. Whenever I do sketch, this is my drawing class. We all have to do a sketchbook. This is my demo sketchbook. Okay. So I, I'm doing a demo with them this semester. I've not done a demo sketchbook with them, but I'm doing a demo sketchbook with them. Value study that I showed them how to do on this page. So... The same thing I'm teaching you to do, but we did it on a sketchbook page. And then their next page, they have to do what's called a three-quarter view of a face. The three-quarter view of a face is a face turned not straight to the side, not straight at you, but slightly at an angle, and then up or down just a little bit. Um, this is JoJo. You guys know JoJo. Uh, she modeled for me on this because, uh, like I said, I have students model for each other all the time in, in this drawing class. And then what they do is freehand draw. They do. Now, you guys might be able to see some of this sketch, probably not all of it. But here's the thing. I will show you after I'm done in here, and you can look at this. The entire face is sketched out. On there, you can hardly see it. On this projection, you can hardly see it. That's how light I sketch. I sketch that light for a reason. I sketch that light because I make mistakes. I sketch that light so I can erase my mistakes. It always amazes me when my students in Art One sketch like they're professional artists or think they're professional artists. They sketch so dark that they can't erase their mistakes. What I want you to learn is how to have a light hand and a soft hand compared to a dark 
hard pressing hand. When I do shading, like I'm working the shading on this right now, I press for the dark areas, I'm light for the light areas. But you can hardly see my sketch. Okay, and this is the comparison of shading added to a regular sketch. So I will show this to you when you guys are up if you want to take a look. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to have everybody get up and you need to get that sheet of paper. You need to get also the uh, pencil. Everybody needs one of the pencils. And